Right, I posted a picture online recently. It was a silly picture making fun of the way Scottish people speak. This is it. You can see it here. Very funny, isn't it? Hilarious. Hilarious. Well, it turns out that in fact, I received some feedback from coaches in Scotland, foreign coaches who work in Scotland, and they agreed. When Scottish people speak, they have no idea what they are saying. When a Scottish person speaks to them, gives some sort of instruction on the pitch, they have no idea what the Scottish person is saying. And there's a very good reason for that. It's because Scottish people can't actually speak English. You feel that this place is more accessible, particularly for some of our colleagues who have a disability. Here, here. Could you please repeat the question because I didn't follow it. Um, I, I'm saying that a number of parliamentary colleagues who have disabilities do find it quite difficult getting around certain parts of the state. Given that we're doing this refurbishment work, what can be done to make sure that those with a disability are, are able to move around more freely and the place is accessible? I'm really sorry. Please, could you do it very slowly and in intimidating English? No, I am kidding. Of course, Scottish people speak English. I actually think the Scottish accent is very attractive. That's brilliant. It's wonderful. But it is difficult to understand. That is true. Even for, for me, sometimes the Scottish accent is difficult. So to help you with that, we are going to take a look at an interview with the Scottish captain, Andy Robertson, and have a look at what he says, some of the phrases he uses, and the way he speaks. Just to give you a little bit of context, this is an interview from just after Scotland defeated Spain 2-0 in a Euro qualifying match. Roll the clip. Congratulations. How much did you enjoy that one? Yeah, I loved it. Um, you know, we knew we had to try and get off to a good start. We knew we had to try and put them under pressure, get the fans with us. And I think we've done a really good job of that. When you score so early doors, you kind of fall back a wee bit and start. We started defending a wee bit too deep at the end of the, sec uh, the first half. And we just had to try and push ourselves up and try and get in their half. And I thought second half was a really professional performance. and. It shows you how far we've came. It absolutely does, and we were just talking about that, just how much you as players believed you could go and get that result tonight, and that must have been key to that performance. Yeah, well, look, the gaffer's been quite consistent in the, the squads that he's picked and things like that, and you can see that with the number of caps we've got now. You know, when he first took over, there wasn't too much experience within us, and now, you know, we've got a lot of lads on high 30s, you know, early 40s and things like that, and that makes a huge difference when it comes to these games. You have to dip into your experience, and I thought... We had a lot of experience on the pitch, and then we make subs like Cooper and McLean that come on and just kill the game. And yeah, it was a, it was a top performance from us. To start with, let's just look at some of the vocabulary that he uses. First one there, a wee bit. We kind of fall back a wee bit and started defending a wee bit too deep. A wee bit just means a little bit. It's very Scottish. Scottish people say this all the time. We just means little. For example, you could say when I was a wee boy, when I was a little boy, I loved playing football at school. All right. It just means little. If you go to Scotland, you'll hear it all the time. The gaffer. The gaffer has been quite consistent. The gaffer is a common slang word, very common in Scotland, but also used in England. It just means the boss, the, the person at the top. In football, it gets used to speak about the head coach or the manager. So Eric Ten Hag is the gaffer of Manchester United. Pep Guardiola is the gaffer of City. And at Chelsea, nobody knows who the gaffer is because it changes every 20 minutes. <laughs> caps. And you can see that with the number of caps we've got now. If you play for an international team in any sport, not just football, in any sport, you get a cap. If you play one game, you get a cap. If you play two games, you get two caps. If you play three games, etc. Every game you play, you get a cap. This is very common the way we speak everywhere in the English speaking world. If you represent your country in a sport one time, you get a cap. All right, let's keep going. If you are a coach, an analyst, or anyone working in the world of football, and you think that your English might be a problem for your career, then don't forget that you can download my free ebook, Speak Fluent Football. It goes over the three keys you need to improve your English so that you can work in an English-speaking environment. Click the link 
in the description below to get it today. There was a belief in the camp that we could get a result here, you know, and we knew it would put us in a good position, but it's important we all don't get carried away. We've got six points, which is a great start, but unfortunately six points doesn't qualify you for the Euros. It puts us in a good place. We've got two massive games in June, and then if we come out with that, with, with the points that we, we, we think we need, then it'll put us in an even better position. You know, it's only it's only a five-man uh, you know, um, group. It's only eight games. It's a kind of more of a sprint. And, and yeah, we've put ourselves in a great place, but you know we have to we have to keep going. We have to put in the same determination, the same desire we showed tonight. And if we do that, it gives us a hell of a chance to win any game. Get carried away. It's important we all don't get carried away. When you get carried away, you get very excited, but you get very excited too early. It's too early to be excited. So, in a good example, recently, earlier this year, Arsenal fans got carried away they were very excited they thought this is the year we will win the premier league 2023 it's our time and oh, looks like they got carried away too early they were too excited too early now the real problem most people have when they listen to scottish people speak is the pronunciation of with the scottish accent the way scottish people say certain words and certain sounds a good example is the way they pronounce the u in words like put or push have a listen to andy robertson say these words and just try to listen to how it's different so i would say put or push listen to how andy robertson says them and we just had to try and push ourselves up and we knew we had to try and put them under pressure put them under pressure put, put them under pressure you, you say i can't do it sorry to scottish people if you watch this but it's a little bit like he says the p and the t and there's nothing in the middle put put them under pressure so it's very fast it goes very quick put them under pressure put them under pressure sorry terrible scottish accent i won't do it again another one that is very common in scotland is they tend to change the sound of the i in words like win or words like pitch they change it so it sounds more like an have a listen to these words. I've got a few examples. The squads that he's picked and things like that. We had a lot of experience on the pitch, and then we make subs like Cooper and McLean that come mm. on and just kill the game, and we've got six points. The six points, it gives us a hell of a chance to win any game. So again, you see the, the, the I turns into an E. When he says pitch, it sounds a bit more like pitch. Okay, pick sounds a bit more like peck. Kill, kill, win, when, and six. <laughs> Sorry, very immature. So these are two pronunciation, not problems, but pronunciation issues means problems. Two things about Scottish pronunciation that you probably need to know to help you understand them when they speak. Finally, let's have a look at something that everybody loves, grammar. I often tell my students that grammar is really not that important when it comes to communication, especially not in the world of football. If you're a lawyer or you are a journalist where accurate language is very important, then maybe it's a little more important. You know, you maybe need to have a strong grammar foundation. But in the world of football, it's a little less important. The communication is very different. The communication is all about being clear, effective, and confident. It's not necessarily about being perfectly accurate. And Andy Robertson agrees with me. So have a, have a listen to this. Get the fans with us, and I think we've done a really good job of that. I thought second half was a really professional performance, and it shows you how far we've came. Now, Robertson makes two mistakes here, two, gr two, two grammar mistakes here. First of all, he says, we done. It should be, we did. And then he also says, we've came. It should be, we've come. I'm not bringing this up to point at Andy's English and ha ha, you have terrible English. That's not my point at all. My point is people get very concerned with their grammar when they learn English. They get very focused. Oh, I have terrible grammar. My grammar is no good. Oh, I make grammar mistakes. But look, Andy Robertson is a native English speaker or a native Scottish speaker. Sorry, Andy. He doesn't have perfect grammar when he speaks. 
He does not speak with the kind of grammar that a lot of students want to speak with. And a lot of people in Scotland would, would probably say the same thing. It's a feature of Scottish English. So I really just brought that up to make a bit of a point and ask you a little bit of a question, or I want you to ask yourself a question. If Andy Robertson, a native English speaker, does not need perfect grammar, then do you need perfect grammar? But I am interested to hear your thoughts, so comment below and let me know how important do you think perfect grammar is, or how important do you think grammar is generally? Please comment below and let me know. If you found that video useful and you want to watch another one, click here. Or if you want to watch the full episode, click here.